thought you'd, I'd give you a couple things that I'm doing in my own gardens that I think would really, really help you uh, make gardening easier. I'm, I'm the lazy gardener. I shouldn't be the mount gardener. I should be the lazy gardener because I want fabulous gardens with the least amount of care I can have. I love going out in the morning and deadheading my flowers in the front little patch. But I don't want to do that for the entire half acre. That would be just work. I mean, a little, you know, 500 feet is different than 20,000 feet. And so there's some shortcuts, some kind of garden hacks that I do that really make it easier. Two things mainly I've done, really three. Um, one thing, fertilize right away. <laughs> Take advantage of the rain. If you put this on, a grape or any, a tree that was struggling, the leaves were small, you can tell it was stressed by drought. You put this on, let the rains carry it in, within two, three weeks, whole new plant. It is amazing the difference. You deadhead your roses and you put this on there, let the rain carry it in, within three, four weeks, totally loaded up with flowers. Crepe myrtles, a butterfly bush, it's a game changer. This is another growing season. The second we get a rain, this is, the, this is a, we think spring is the growing season. It's not. That's actually the most difficult growing season. When the rains start, that's when it really gets easy because the soil's warm, the humidity is up, the, the days are long, and we don't have that prevailing southwest wind that's like 10% humidity. It just vaporizes that new growth of spring. You'll find you have more success now. Whether it's fertilizing established things or adding new things to the gardens. This is when you see a butterfly bush in full bloom. Crepe myrtles just started to bloom. Roses will have their best flowers in August and September. My grapes have gone, I think in the last week, they've grown like this much. It's amazing. Just the, the rain and, and the little bit of food it just goes crazy. They're starting to set their little, little uh, clusters. And then in addition to that, that's my one thing. In addition, this is like the one that no one knows, but you're my friends. I'm letting you know. Um, I hate weeding. I mean, I loathe. I despise with a passion. I can't emphasize that enough. Weeding is the worst. Uh, man, was, man and woman were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and we were put here to weed, and I hate that. It just feels like a curse. Um, I put this down at the same time I put my food down. This is weed and grass stopper. You just put it in your same hand spreader. I just took my hand spreader and sling it around. And it keeps the seed from germinating. You can put it underneath trees. It doesn't affect things that are already growing. It only affects seed. And this is when your tumbleweeds come out. This is when goat head, that one with the burr that just gets about this big with a thousand burrs where the dogs walk on it, like they start limping around. That's an annual. It only comes back by seed. It's when your whorehound gets huge. This is when all the nasty weeds come out. And they're all, virtually all of them are annuals. They only come back with a seed. If you keep the seed from germinating, you won't have weeds or it'll cut down by 90, 95% the weed count. So I sling this on, it's like 25 bucks. It covers 5,000 square feet. I buy a bag for the front, bag for the back, and I sling it around on my rock lawn, in between my, my uh, flower raised beds. I think places where I see the dandelions and the things come up and I don't have weeds. I hardly ever weed because I put this down. It's a game changer. Well, watch your bugs, watch your bugs. Uh, the rains get everything growing faster. Your plants you like to grow, the new plants you just planted, and the weeds, and the bugs. Everything grows fast. I mean, grasshoppers will go from this big to, I mean, this overnight. So keep up on them. Uh, I just shot uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, if not, you should be following that. So Facebook, Waters Garden Center. I uh, just got a great shot of spider mites. We blew them up by 200 times their size. So you could actually, they're microscopic, you can't see them. But if you blow them up 200 times, you can see them. They're roaming around, you can see how many eggs there were. And then we showed how to solve that. But spider mites are out. Aphids are still out on Potinias. Grasshoppers are starting to go. You're going to see pill bugs on your uh, uh, silver lace. What's the other one? Uh, the forked. Anyway, there's a bunch of bugs on the ground that'll come out. So kind of watch that. And keep up on it because they'll overtake you pretty quick. Okay. Yep. Yeah.
you can fertilize when you have fruit on your on your plants. Generally, what I do, um, I'll, I'll fertilize right after I pick them. So peaches, I've fertilized because I picked all those. Cherries, I fertilized. I picked all those. I did fertilize my blackberries, even though they're loaded with blackberries. We'll have a party tonight with family, and I'll, we will have fresh blackberries. Grapes, I fertilize regularly. Yeah, I mean, every six, eight weeks, I fertilize my grapes for my yard, but I live in nasty soil. So I need to fertilize a little bit more. On that fertilizer, can you just put it on the top of your soil, or do you have to blend it in? So, I'm dealing with gardeners. I know who you are, because you're in a grape class, okay? You all are allowed to work it in, so I know you like to work hard with your gardens. I'm the lazy gardener. The last thing I'm going to do is work. I just chuck it on and I walk away. I expect the rains to release it. Don't think in terms of your drip irrigation. It doesn't matter at all when you're fertilizing. Think in terms of drip line. Those outer branches, so with a grape, those big vines are coming out. Think that that area is where you're fertilizing. A big uh, shade tree, a, a rose bush with a, think, think, not at the trunk. Don't think the drip part uh, uh, emitters. Think the drip line, and you'll get better fertilization, M much better. So you can't put it on the top of the Right on top, it'll go through the rock, it'll go through the fabric. Okay. It'll go through all that mulch. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Great for tomatoes. Tremendous on tomatoes. You've got fruit on the screen, still fertilized. Yeah, yeah, it's organic. This, this is all natural, it's cottonseed meal mainly. And some bird guano, and I put some fairy dust in. Just, just I made it really magical, but it slowly releases. So I would not recommend that for a chemical based, like a Scotts, your typical box store stuff. Those are all petroleum based, and they release too fast. They will burn. They'll cause fruit drop. But Waters Garden Center makes better stuff. <laughs> and it's for local. It's for local. But it's made to feed very long, very slow over a long period of time. And so I, with that caveat, yes. Okay. And what do you do for the bugs? Bugs, you kill them. Yeah, bugs don't yeah. deserve to live. You should kill them.